You say, well, Pastor Jean, I am not God. I cannot love unconditional. I've been hurt time and time again. I don't care how many times you have been hurt. You have to love your enemies. You have to love those who do not love you. You have to love people, you know, when they disrespect you. I pray that you will really, really pray and seek the Lord for His divine love. Praise the Lord. It is good to be with you today on Shekinah, and I pray and hope that you had a great week in the Lord. And I, we're not going to come in agreement for the program. Father God, how we praise you and we thank you. I bring you all the viewers before you today, everyone that has tuned in, mighty God. First of all, we ask that you cover them and their homes with your precious blood. Today we ask for salvation for those homes. Mighty God, unsaved loved ones will be saved. And we are asking for your divine presence in, that, in those homes. And we pray, God, now you will quicken this word to your children. Father God, I have never seen this before. Though I'm preaching for almost 50 years, I have never, ever, 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 ever in my life receive a revelation like this one. Today I thank you because it took a long time, but I know everything comes with growth. As we continue to grow in the Lord, and as we continue to be yielded vessels to the Holy Spirit, as we continue to reverence and have great respect for the Holy Spirit, Father God, I can honestly say you do reveal your secrets to your people. And today I pray as this word of God goes forth, just like how I receive it, I will give it. And I pray that your people Mighty God, in Jesus' mighty name, will receive the word of the Lord and it will not return void. You are indeed a glorious God. And in Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, dear God, that maturity doesn't come with age. Maturity comes with responsibility. We thank you, dear God, in Jesus' mighty name. When we are responsible, mighty God, in Jesus' name, when we, are, when we live a disciplined life, when we live a life of accountability, mighty God, maturity is next. And today I give you praise and I give you thanks. In Jesus' mighty name, Bless your children that they will receive this revel revelation with love. It is one of the greatest message that I've ever received from the Holy Spirit. And again, I give you praise. Open the hearts and the understanding of your people. Open their ears spiritually. And we ask God that the Holy Spirit will take this word as it go forth mixed with faith. Mighty God, you'll be able to do your work as your children 
cry out to God for God's divine love. Father God, when we have God's divine love, every single thing in our lives will be in order. Every single area of our lives will be 100% in order. And today I give you praise as you bless me now with the divine unction, the divine utterance, and bless me to deliver this word in fear and trembling. Father God, I thank you again in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. I'm reading now from 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4 from 7 to 21. 1 John chapter 4 from 7 to 21. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Now, when the word says we must love one another, this is not a fleshly love. I do not want to go in Greek and Hebrew today because Many, many do, and people don't have the understanding. I like to keep the gospel very, very simple. And what this love is all about is not the fleshly love it's called, which is called the filial love. This love is called agape love. And this love, the world knows nothing about. And I can honestly say that this agape love, the church is far from it. And like I said, this message, though I am preaching, I'm a Christian for about 50 years almost, and I'm preaching the gospel for more than 33 years, I think, I've got this revelation in prayer just today. Today is Thursday. It's the 26th of August. And I thank God for this day. It's the greatest day in my life because I have never, ever, never received anything that is so powerful. I am trying to do this program, but uh, it's a great effort because I'm so overwhelmed. It is like, <laughs> it is very, very difficult, but I know I have to do it anyways. Now, this agape love is... God's divine love. This is not a love that is corrupting. That is not, this is not a love that's corrupted. This is not a love that is confusion. This is not a love that is selfish. This is a love that is unconditional. And the reason why I had to say the world does not know about this love. And I say this with no reservation. The church does not have this love. If the church had this love, the church of Jesus Christ 
would have already been revived million times over. But since I have to understand where I came from and I had to wait 50 years as a Christian to receive this from God. I have to understand the same with my brothers and sisters in Christ. Because, like I said, this could have been given to me years ago. Because I'm not a careless Christian. I love God with every fiber in my being. I have great respect and reverence for the Holy Spirit. And if I put my hand to do something for the Lord, I don't do it anyhow. I do it with, what should I say? I do it, I see it as a great privilege. I see it as the highest honor. Um, I do it with my whole heart. I do not like to do anything for God anyhow. I have to give it my best. And this is how I have handled my life as a Christian for almost 50 years. So, I have to say today, those of you who are listening to this message, I pray that you will really, really pray and seek the Lord for his divine love, or you can say his agape love. You say, well, Pastor Jean, I am not God. I cannot love unconditional. I've been hurt time and time again. I don't care how many times you have been hurt. You have to love your enemies. You have to love those who do not love you. You have to love people, you know, when they disrespect you, you have to love people when they persecute you. You have to love people irregardless or irrespective of. So I will encourage you, if you can receive God's agape love and you can love unconditional. Every area, every aspect of your Christian life will fall in place. Um, for the past six months, I was dealing a lot about this love as in God, I love you so much that I, I don't have the vocab to express this love. And Lord, I want to express my love for you. But it is so overwhelming that I don't know where to start. For the past six months, I am like that morning, noon, and night. And I would weep all the time when I feel that love is so, so overwhelming. I would weep and I would say, God, I don't know. Though I know God knows that I love him, I want to express that love. You say you can express God's agape love or that divine, divine love by doing stuff for God. No. I know a lot of people 
that are very, very kind, very, very kind people, but they don't know God. So I can't agree if you do kind stuff that is a way to express your love. I know you have to be kind. I know that you have to have, you know, good works and everything. But like I just said, I know a lot of people that have great works. They'll go, they'll do things even more than Christians. But they don't know God. It's a love that I try to express plain to God many, many times. I love you so much, but I can't put it in words. And when I got this revelation today, this morning, while in prayer, now I'm understanding everything. Now I'm understanding a lot more. Because when I receive it, I went back to the many, many years trying to remember a lot of things and trying to put pieces together. And um, I just... I just froze. It's like, how do you do this? But I'm going to tell you, if you get it, if you get it, you can be sure of one thing. Every area of your life will come, will be in order. Every area. So, I'm going to continue. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. This is a love you can't fake it. If you try to fake this love, trust me, you're going to trip because it won't last. And you can't fake this love. This is a love that your heart is so, 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 so pure. It is so, 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 so clean that there is not one thing in this heart about anybody who you have issues with can linger. It will not have room to linger. You'll see those people through the eyes of Christ. And there are many Christians today who can't forgive. When you forgive, trust me, it's clear and clean. And the, reasons, the reason why you see, we, it is easy to know when we forgive or if we're just harboring stuff, it's easy to know because when you come in contact with people that you have issues with in life, there is something that erupts that can't happen. When you come in contact with people who harm you, who hurt you, when you see them, you must go and hug them. And there is nothing in this heart that will have to rise up. Because why? It's clean. It is pure. You can go and hug them in the Lord. You can sit and have a conversation with them. And the Lord, and the Lord alone, the Lord alone will understand that. Because he tried the hearts and reigns of man. So it is a love that must be perfected. 
It is not a love that will come overnight. It is a love that every single day you have got to pass every test that come your way with that divine love. And this is what has been happening to me for the past six months because I do not have a problem with unforgiveness. I don't have a problem with people who try to come up against me. And I do not have a problem with forgiveness. I, if you know, if you have a clue the things that I go through in life, start with my own people, my own family, blood. You will, I don't know what you will do. And as a preacher, I ask God all the time when I feel hurt and pain, I ask God all the time to let me forgive them let me see them through the eyes of Christ and let me live as an example, not having anything inside of me. Because if I have anything inside of me, then there will be some short circuits. And you don't want short circuits. You want this divine love to flow, that they can see Christ in you, and that they can see, they can see, well, okay, here is an example of Christ. And for the past months, trust me, even within my own, there is there was a lot. And when I received this revelation today, I said, yes, Lord. I thank you because for the six months with a lot of wrestling, I am positive today. And I can say that God has blessed me with his divine love. And the reason why I'm positive is because of the revelation I receive. And I said, God, what, a, what about a brother or a sister that has, that has done me much evil? How do you deal with that? I forgive them. I, my heart is clean, my heart is pure. And then the scripture came. The scripture came as clear as ever. And I'd like to take you there before I continue. There is two portions of scripture that I receive when I ask God that. Look at Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17, and we will go now from verse 1. Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible that offenses will come. It is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and be cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Praise God. This, this portion of scripture doesn't have to do nothing with children. Little children. 
All right? This portion of scripture has to do with believers. Praise God. That's the revelation. Take heed to yourself. Watch this. If your brother trespass against you, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. Now, that one really stuck out. If he repent, forgive him. I am not going to deal with unforgiveness today, but I'm just sharing my experience with you. These are, this is the scripture I got. If he repent, forgive him. Now, watch this. And if he trespass against you seven times in a day, seven times in a day, turn again to you saying, I repent, you must forgive him. Now, so I said, Lord, if someone is just all about to hurt me. And trust me, we have them. What do you do here? I forgive. I repent whatever on my part. But if they don't repent and say, but I forgive you or whatever, or I'm sorry, what do you do? The Lord said, Jean, you still love them, but you love them with my love. I said, so how do you mix with them? The Lord said, no, 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 no. If they don't say sorry, then how are you going to sit with them? And mix with them. You must love them until they say sorry. And that sorry has to be genuine. It has to be genuine. But you don't get sorry. You get all the time. I don't know what you're talking about. It is not true. And you know it's true because God continued to give dreams. He continued to reveal. And you know it's not true. So I said, God, am I in the clear? If a brother or sister is doing evil against me, Yes, I love them with God's love, but I don't sit and mix up and wrap up. Do you have a problem with that? The Lord said, no. If they don't say sorry, he has no problem with that. And this thing has to be genuine. I thank God for that. Praise the Lord. God is good. You can love people. With God's agape love. And if you know that they're your enemy and they're doing you wrong, you don't have to wrap up. You are clear, but you must love them. You cannot have one inch in this heart of bitterness or unforgiveness. If you're going to be a true, true child of God, you can't have anything in your heart because God will not hear your prayers. All right? Now I'm going to go to another one I got. Listen to this one. We're going to go to Mark. Mark chapter 11. Remember, this is just an explanation 
of some questions I asked the Lord. So we're going to go to Mark chapter 11. So let us hear what the Word of God says. Mark 11. And we will go from verse 25. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. So, it's a serious thing that you must keep your heart very, very pure and clean against your enemies. Very, very important. If you have, once you pray and ask God for that divine love, you have nothing to worry about. God didn't say, go wrap up with them. God says, when you stand to pray, make sure that all is clear. You have forgiven. Not when you see them, your enemy, you know, you are way out inside. Inside must be so pure and clean. You must be able to go and greet them. And when I say greet them with the love of Jesus, it's not about man. It is God that tried the hearts and reins of man. And the Lord sees and knows if your heart is clear. My thing today, if you have issues with your brother and sister, you got to come clean and clear. Because avoiding them means you are not clear. You are not dealing with your brother and sister with God's agape love. In the church, you can't avoid nobody. That is not brotherly love. Now, I'm talking to you based on the revelation I received from God this day. If you are avoiding them, it's because your love is not made perfect. God's agape love does not avoid. God's agape love embraces. It does not avoid. Praise the Lord. Always remember that. It does not avoid. It embraces. I look at Jesus and his life when I received this revelation, and what I see in our, in our Lord's, uh, what I see about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and his 33 years on this earth, the last three years, of course, was ministry. And 30 years, you know, you name it. Everything about Jesus is love. Because the love of the Father, the love of his Father is perfected in his Son. 
And many times when you go to the scripture, you will see some hard stuff about Israel. And you know they are God's chosen. He would call them stiff-necked. He would say things like, you weary me with your repenting. He would say things like, why do you hate me? Why do you keep rejecting me? When he was on trial just before the cross, he said to the governors, what have I done? Why, why you, you're treating me this way? Why are you? Why do I have to go through all these things? What have I done? I did this, I did that, I did the other. What have I done but good? And yet, look at our Lord. He would turn and say in another chapter, he would say, Israel is the apple of my eyes. He would turn and say that he will restore unto them what all that the locust has eaten. He will turn to them and say, no matter what you have done to me, I will love you always with an everlasting love. The Father's love was perfected in him. And church, we need God's agape love. And that love, like I said, it has to be perfected in us. And it will be perfected in us through trials and testings. Every single day, how you deal with trials and testings and tribulation will determine if you will have God's divine love. And from the time you listen to this message, Make sure that you put it into practice because once you're praying for God's agape love, trust me, the heat will turn up. And it will turn up for one thing, to test you, and to try you. You have to examine your heart. You have to examine yourself very carefully. And I'm going to tell you today, it's hard, but I'm going to tell you. Because I love you. If you do not have God's agape love, you tell me how are you going to make heaven your home with all the stuff and the junk that you, has, that you have in you. You have to answer that. Oh, today everybody's ready for heaven. Everybody is very ready. The rapture takes place now. Everybody in the church thinks they're very ready. I have always said to the church that I pastor. If Jesus were to return now, 
90% of the church will be left behind. And I don't know why I would say those things. I was just say it because I know that what I'm saying is of the Spirit of God. Though hard it was, I would say it. Okay, so if you want to give me some understanding here, today with this revelation, now I'm understanding a lot of stuff. More so, Today, I'm understanding a lot of stuff when I got this revelation. Now I understand why all those things I would say it. Because truly, I was trying to figure out in the past years, you know, so much, so much, so much, so much. And you wonder, you know, a lot of people will criticize me and, you know, they don't want to, you know, su su submit. They don't want to, whatever. But I thank God because now I'm understanding it. My standards in Christ has been the highest of the highest. I do not play church. And I do not like when the Holy Spirit is grieved, when he is grieved, I know. When he is not pleased, I know. When he is disrespected, I know. When things are not in order, he is very displeased. And I am understanding stuff now. A lot of stuff I'm understanding now today when I receive this revelation. And I'm going to tell you, when God's divine love is in perfect progress in your life, Everything will work in harmony. Everything. You have brothers and sisters in Christ in the church. You have an issue with this one. You have an issue with this one. You walk. You see them on the right. You go on the left. You avoid. That's not God. It's not God. What the devil is trying to do to us, we must walk like that and love in part. You can't do that. God's love must be so perfected in you that even you see your enemy here, don't detour, go hug them. That's God's love. God is a good God. And we need God's agape love. We need God's divine love to flow through us. This is not a lustful love. I love you, I love you, I love you. No, 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 no. This is not a love when you make those solemn vows before God, before man and God in marriage. You know, you love today and you hate tomorrow. No. Love is not selfish. When you have God's agape love, love is submissive. Love is very submissive. Love, when you have God's love, you will respect God. 
and reverence him all the time. When you have God's love, the first time in my life I am getting the understanding of all of a lot of stuff. Almost 50 years. And I thank God for it. Things have been happening for the past six months, like I said, and I don't understand it. I couldn't put it together. I just want to express this love. I was sharing with a sister last week about what I was feeling because she was sharing with me an experience she had. And I was telling this sister, you know, I love God so much, but I can't put it in words. I just don't want to say, Lord, I love you. Like, I can't put it in words. And today I'm understanding everything. When you love God, you will do what he wants you to do. No matter how difficult the task is, you will go to it. For me to live, I can say this day, is Christ. And to die is gain. I love the Lord more than anything else in life. The Lord comes before my entire family. The Lord comes before anybody or anything. And the church always hears that. Today I understand why I say those things. It's his divine love that is flowing. And when his divine love flows and is there and it flows, you know beyond a shadow of a doubt That his presence is there. You will be able to get through every area, everything in your life that looks so, so difficult that you think that you will, hmm, you will never be able to pass certain tests. But you have passed all those tests if you have his divine love flowing through you. Love covers a multitude of sins. See your enemies through Jesus' eyes. See them through his eyes. Love them with his divine love. Like I said, you don't have to rap because this Bible teaches if your brother who harm you or your sister who harm you or hurt you, if they repent, forgive. If they don't repent, you got to you don't have to wrap up. God is good. But how are you gonna get that? Because they never did anything wrong. You're the one that's wrong all the time. But God is good. Take the wrong. You take all the wrong. That's okay. For Jesus' sake, take it. But love them with God. God's love. And you can do, you can show kindness, do it with your whole heart. Irregardless or irrespective of, do it with your whole heart. 
Praise the Lord. Now let's go on. He who loves not, verse 8, knows not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us. And if we truly have God's divine love flowing through us, that love will be manifested everywhere we go and in everything we do. If we truly have God's divine love. In this was manifested the love of God, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him, here in his love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the, propiti the propitiation of our sins. Praise God. Beloved, if God so love us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, guess what? The Bible says, then God dwells in you. And his love is perfected in us. That doesn't come overnight. We have to work at it. I was feeling this love for six months more than ever in my whole life. And I love God. Why the past six months? I didn't understand it. It was so overwhelming. Sometimes I can't bear it. And the love is so pure and it's so clean. And like all you can do is weep. But you can't express it. It says, and his love is perfected in us, hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit, and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him and he, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us, God is love, and he who dwells in love dwells in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear, because fear has torment. He who fears is not made perfect perfect in love. Anything that you are fearful about as a child of God, you, don't, you are not made perfect in God's love. Your love for God, something is wrong. I have stood in the, before the church many, many, many years I'm preaching and I always tell this church, I'm not afraid of no one. I'm not afraid of anything. I don't care how high and mighty you are. I'm not afraid of nothing or no one. And I don't understand why. Today now, today I'm understanding all of that. Today I'm understanding all of that. I don't know why I would say such things. Because... My love for God is perfect. Today I'm getting it. And not only that, I would say a lot of stuff. Even online when I'm preaching. Lots of things I would say. And I don't get it. Today I get it. God's love is being made perfect in me, and yet, yet, 
I have to continue in that. And there is more to come. But as I serve God daily, that love will become more and more perfect in me. Praise God. Let me go on. We have known and believed the love that God has to us, and he who dwells in love dwells in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear, because fear has torment. And he who fears is not made perfect in love, but we love him because he loved us. If a man say, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who loves not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment have we from him, and that we, and that he who loves God loves his brother also. I'm getting the understanding of a lot of stuff since this morning. I would stand and tell the flock. If a gunman comes in the church, I will ask him to shoot me and spare the flock. All those things I would preach all the time. To them understanding everything. I would do that because God's love is being perfected in me. That's why I could have said a lot of things. So Pastor Jean, would you say that you have God's divine love flowing in you? Yes. I have more still to get, more still to come. Every single day, how I handle testing, trials, tribulation in my life, how I handle stuff that comes from my enemies will determine how far. You say, well, if you have it, how much more you want? There's no limit. God will take you as far as you want to go. So when you have God's agape love, these are some of the things that you will not do. God's agape love is not selfish. God's divine love or his agape love, same thing. God's divine love is not selfish. God's divine love is submissive. When you have God's divine love, you will respect authority. When you have divine, God's divine love, you will make sure that you have unity. Unity in your home, unity in the church, unity wherever you go. There has to be perfect unity. And Paul graciously talked about that in the book of Ephesians. When he says, we must dwell in unity and love one another. When you have God's agape love, you won't go and commit adultery. When you have God's agape love, you won't fornicate. When you have God's, agape, when you have God's divine love, you will not go and, 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 and say you're putting your hand to witchcraft. When you have God's divine love, you will not avoid your enemies. You will embrace them. When you have God's divine love, you will not gossip. When you have God's divine love, you will not tell lies. When you have God's divine love, you will not go and sleep with the same sex. You will not think about being gay. When you have God's divine love, you will make sure. You will make sure that you're a soul winner. Because you will know the value of a soul when you have his 
divine love. When you have God's divine love, you will have character. When you have God's divine love, every single thing in your life will flow in harmony. And trust me, even if your household doesn't have it, and if one get it in the household, it will make a tremendous difference. Because why? There is one that's walking among them that is like Christ. I would like to entitle this message. I'm going to personalize it. You need God's divine love. You need it. More than ever, we need it. And the love chapter is 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We call it the love chapter. Though we speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not, um, this, it says here charity, but I'm going to say love because it means love. The word charity means love. And have not charity, we are become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I'm nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me nothing. Charity, love suffers long and is kind. Envy is not charity. Love wants not itself. It is not puffed up. In other words, it doesn't have pride in it. Does not behave itself unseemly, seeks not her own, is not easily provoked. Love thinks no evil. Love rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. 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 Love bears all things, believes all things, hope all things. Endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. And when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child and I thought as a child. And when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now, we see through a glass darkly. But then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abides faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. You need God's divine love. It is very important in this hour. Jesus is coming soon. And we have to have it. Let's pray. To those who are not saved, I'd like you to invite Christ in your heart. Repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. I do repent. Come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And Lord, today I ask that you bless me with this divine love. In Jesus' name, amen. To the Christians, you know in your heart you have a lot. I want you to pray after me now, all you Christians. 
Dear Lord Jesus, I claim I'm a child of God, but I don't have your divine love. And in the name of Jesus, I need it. Because once I get it, everything will flow in harmony. I am asking you, bless me with this divine love. The love that, is, that comes from God. And I pray God in Jesus' name that you will forgive me. Because I need this divine love in my home, in the church, and wherever I go. So that I can be a shining example for Christ. I thank you as I receive your divine love now. In Jesus' name, amen. May God literally bless you. We love you dearly. Have a great week in the Lord.